Hello everybody, this is Amir Alwani from PotentNews.com. Let's talk about some astrology and also before we get into it, I'll say uh, hit me up for tarot readings or astrology readings. That's tarot or astrology, that's why I got the thing flashing in the back there. The batteries are almost finished, but that's for other uh, another platform that I stream on. Uh, so we're not going to be talking too much about uh, tarot today, um, unless I do happen to touch on it, but... Uh, anyway, so let's, let's uh, before we get into this, let me hit this pipe because, you know, we recently had uh, Jupiter-Neptune conjunction that everybody was talking about, and uh, that was what, 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 where was that? That was on the 12th, same day that the sun sextiled Saturn, uh, 12th of uh, April. So we've been leading up to that for a week or two. That was building up maybe. And then after that now also for a week or two. What that means is, uh, you know, this pipe. That's what that means. Because <laughs> Jupiter is good luck. And uh, Neptune uh, rules Pisces. And Pisces are, are the hippies of the Zodiac. And they're about altered states. And they, they're about drugs and stuff. And... Uh, uh, any kind of uh, fantasy or confusion or, or boundarylessness, you know, um, like movies and stuff like that. Uh, they like the Netflix, you know. So Jupiter, which is hope and optimism and good luck, combining with Neptune, which is stuff like this, resulted in me going to the weed store that day and asking them... Uh, I was like, okay, so so you guys told me that, that uh, you can't get this unless you're the, in the rewards program, correct? Because they had it on display. I wanted to buy it, but the previous time they said that you can't, you, this is not even for sale. So then, but this day of Jupiter conjunct Neptune, I came there, you know, and I said, uh, I asked them that, and they said, actually, here, let me see if you have enough points. Turned out I had enough points at the store, uh, you know, from the rewards program to actually earn this. It's not that great of a pipe, but hey, it's uh, it's uh, it was at the day that Jupiter conjuncted Neptune, in, in, in the exact, just a few hours off, maybe four hours, some shit like that. But like I said, it does, what does four hours mean with for like two weeks or a week or whatever? Uh, these are long-term planets. <sighs> anyway, uh, let me hit this. So happy 420, a belated 420. I didn't, uh, I don't know if I said that on the Instagram yesterday, but uh, you know, that's that weed related uh, holiday weed. Uh, let me get this here too. So, so yeah, that Jupiter conjunct Neptune. I don't want to be. To talk too much about that except to say that basically you know uh, there's some J Jupiter conjunct Neptune means they're in the same spot on, on the astrological wheel and uh, so they're both in Pisces um, and as I said Neptune rules Pisces Jupiter used to rule Pisces so it's like uh, um Hold on, I always forget that. Let me double check. Every single fucking time I, I have to double check that. It's like 20 times I double check the same thing. So that is... Uh, uh, yes, yes. Previous ruler was Jupiter. So, in other words, uh, that's like a double, double whammy of Pisces energy... But it's not, at the time, like, it wasn't the only thing that was in uh, Pisces. Uh, so you had those two. And let me just double check that. Maybe there it was different. But let's see here. that You had Venus in Pisces. And you still do, I think. We still have Venus in Pisces. If that's the 19th degree now, it was at the 7th degree then. Um, at April 12th, when Jupiter conjuncted Neptune. So... So, um, 
that means uh, you had three planets, one of them short term, that's Venus, uh, two of them long term in Pisces. And there's it's, it's already been enough of this shit. Like, enough of the Pisces shit. Okay, we had like a Pisces stellium also. Uh, it feels like, like not, if not a Pisces stellium, like uh, that has been ongoing for a long ass time, we've had uh, Pisces season itself. And then followed by Aries season. And this is what I wanted to say is that um, th th that Neptune Pisces energy uh, is a bunch of intermixing, people mixing too much, either via compassion or intuition, having faulty intuition or too much compassion or taking on too much pain, uh, hearing too many sob stories, uh, uh, or, or just having to, you know, like. Pisces rules the 12th house, so that, that could be any place of seclusion, including hospitals. Right, that's a place of, uh, that can be a place of transition. I don't want to say it that way, but I mean, that's what Pisces is about. It's about ending, so it's exhausting energy. When you have, like, three planets in Pisces, it's exhausting energy. When you had Pisces season, that was exhausting energy. Followed by Aries season, exhausting energy. There's no death that's fun, and there's no birth that's fun. It's, it's always chaotic, and so this same thing, since we have so many planets at that ending, at that Pisces stuff, like fast forward to now, we got the Venus, we got the Mars, we got the Jupiter and the Neptune still, right? Uh, th think, uh, oh, wait a minute, that, w that was the wrong date, hold on. That was for the 23rd of April... Uh, April 23rd, did I have this linked wrong here, I'll give, for, for, for fuck's sake, what am I looking at, I got too many windows open, you see, this is exactly the Mercury retrograde shit incoming, uh, and I'm not going to jump to that right now, but, uh, yeah, let me just, um, get rid of this. There must have been a reason I had that window open. It might have been unrelated to this video. But um, so right now, you know, we have uh, still Venus in, in uh, Pisces, Mars in Pisces, Jupiter in Pisces, Neptune in Pisces. And I should have known that from the two days, given how, f how fast the planets move and stuff. But the point is, okay, the point is all that exhausting energy that we felt in Pisces season, that's like, you know, if you're born from uh, approximately uh, uh, approximately February 18th to March 20th uh, then uh, uh, from that time it just happened that we, we were supposed to put we were supposed to have our main actions which is the Sun uh, where our, most of our focus goes most of our energy you know the Sun sort of sh outshines everything Except for like you know an eclipse, uh, when the, the moon is blocking the sun. But like other than that, if the sun's shining and there's like some planet behind it or something, you're probably gonna see the sun more, right? So, uh, so we've already had most of our focus be on endings, and if any of us didn't do that shit properly, then by now we're not getting as much respect from males and authority figures because that's the sun. So if we didn't do the Pisces thing properly when the males and authority figures' sun stuff was there, then we would have been scrambling when Aries season happened, the next season, the birth, and we would have uh, been uh, more likely to, to be burnt out. You know, I'm not the only person that's been talking about how everyone's tired and whatever. Uh, so... Uh, that tiredness, that ending and rebirth that we just had related to uh, where most of our actions go pertaining to our purpose uh, and pertain like in the physical world and pertaining to uh, what gives us uh, vitality. But thankfully for that now it's in Taurus, so it's a little less impulsive now. But um, uh, it's still, it's still now, it might as well in a way be a Pisces stellium for almost all the signs because right now we've got uh, Sun in Taurus, Moon in Capricorn, Mercury in Taurus. And while the Earth energy is a bit welcome, being able to focus on practicality and stuff, it is yin energy. 
uh, it's the feminine is not as uh, outgoing it's more introverted so in other words there's a shitload of introverted energy already uh, 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 when for the it feels like for the last two months there's been a, a lack of boundaries in general um, and people you know you Neptune is drinking people are drinking more and stuff like that I on the other platform that I that I stream at, uh, you know, uh, you can press a button called Versus and be having a random video chat with some random person anywhere that's also using that app. So I get to use that as a litmus test for how, how much people have been generally drinking and stuff like that and other astrological stuff. And I've been seeing more of that. I've been seeing more uh, of people drinking more and stuff like that. And more psalm stories and excessive compassion and victim complex, savior complex, that kind of thing. So uh, right now, if there's been, if you're in your circles, if there's still some emotional slush and projection that's like happening, I think this Pisces stellium here is going to last like another two, three weeks, last I checked. But uh, that emotional slush might, since it's yin energy also, uh, might bleed into that other yin energy from the sun, moon, and mercury being all in earth right now. So there's kind of like this feeling now of like you can, there's a risk of being too passive. And it's funny because here I'm looking at like, okay, you got Uranus trying the moon and uh, uh, Mercury, which uh, I know I'm all over the place with my delivery here. <laughs> See, I thought of a bunch of things before I, I started to record this, but I didn't write them down. This time I wanted to rely more on my Mercury in Sagittarius in my natal chart, which likes to fly by the seat of their pants. So, um, basically, recently we did have the uh, uh, Mercury conjunct Uranus, and Mercury. some people say Uranus is the higher octave of Mercury, so when they're together, it's kind of like, imagine you're at the piano, and you play a key, and then you play the, the key that's an octave higher, which is the same note, which is higher. So, that kind of gives it like a bigger impact or whatever, and the higher one uh, you're able to see how uh, you can translate some of the insights and so-called downloads that you get into a more Mercury-like thing, which is like Mercury rules Gemini, which is about your neighborhood, and Virgo, which is about your practicality and your, uh, uh, you know, just staying alive and stuff like that. So, so in other words, um, you, like, like, when when uh, when that happened recently with Mercury, which is our thoughts and communication aligning with Uranus, which is our liberation and our like freedom oriented stuff, the long term is a long term planet. When that happened, uh, it was kind of, that's always kind of a nervous time, I think, uh, because a uh, Uranus rules Aquarius, and people say age of Aquarius is about nervous disorders, uh, and. Um, uh, you know, air signs think too much in general. Uh, and also, come to think of it, this Mercury is, uh, you know, close to that north node. Um, I, I, I can't remember if it will conjunct it before it goes retrograde. Let me see here. Uh, yeah, it, it, on the 24th, Mercury will conjunct that north node, meaning that our thoughts and our um, communication about practical matters and stability will harmonize with that overall kind of urge to do that kind of shit in a way uh, that's been happening since January 18th when the North Node went into Taurus. Meaning that in a way that like we got this feeling that for the next year or so, we do put ourselves outside of our comfort zone and challenge ourselves spiritually if we try to keep emotions out of it and, and be practical and just work on money and practicality and understand our values, be able to voice our values. Well, it's difficult to voice your values if Mercury is about to go retrograde. And uh, the sun just entered Mer uh, Taurus, right? So... <coughs> See, Tauruses don't like that kind of cough. <laughs> On that other app, I've had people like, like you know, just, just skip me or block me for doing something like that. So, anyway. um, but let me take a sip of this. Mm -hmm. 
a thousand apologies for all you Venus, uh, Venus, uh, Libra, Taurus people. <sighs> all right. You know, there's a Persian saying, apparently, uh, I, I, th I think I found it on a, a, a tea, a tea uh, holder thing. Uh, you know, when you buy tea and there's like a little saying on the flap, whatever the fuck, you know what I mean. Uh, or if not on the flap, then on something inside the tea bag or on the thing, they'll say these words. And one of them was to respect the, no, to love, to love the rose, you must respect the thorn. So, remember that. <laughs> All right. So, um, so yeah, I'm not gonna let a, a little hiccup like that uh, ruin this video. Uh, moving on. So Mercury is conjuncting that North Node. So basically, that itch to do things in a more practical way and get your resources in order. This like a 18 month itch uh, okay. is. Uh, now benefiting from a little bit more harmonization with our our communication and thinking, which because of the fact that it's in Taurus also, that Mercury communication thinking is in Taurus. So, you know, Taurus is like, you know, you, could, you can talk fast, uh, but they'll like pick out a few words and uh, they'll know the key things that you're saying. And... Uh, so this is what I'm saying to watch out for because Mercury moved pretty fast through Air, uh, Aries, I think it was. Let me just remind, rewind it here. Thursday, April 21st uh, is what we're now. So checking out the March ephemeris circular chart here. You know, at the beginning of March, we had uh, Mercury in uh, Aquarius. So... Um, we were more, that's even too far back to be thinking about, like, uh, it seems like ancient history now, but like, uh, I, okay, so, so, so when, when, uh, Mars started, Mercury was in Aquarius, it moved into Pisces, you know, shortly after that, like around the 10th or so, and then, uh, and, and it went pretty quickly uh, through that and it spent within that month it, it crossed Pisces joined up and, and, and thereby uh, temporarily you know on its, on its way to doing that there was a brief moment when the Sun was still in Pisces right so that, that would have been the Sun and New Neptune and Jupiter and Mercury all in Pisces right so we would have been thinking and talking a lot about faith, hope, and optimism, and illusions, and compassion, and interconnectedness, and all that crap. So hearing people's sob stories, having their emotional slush wash on you, and if you don't know energy work, then it just stays on you. It could stay for like a month or two, maybe. I don't know. I don't want to say that for sure, but like, uh, you know, I mean, it would fit with what I'm seeing with the planets, at least for some people here. Right. So then what I'm saying now, though, is Mercury, our thoughts, which is Mercury and communication, spent a brief time in compassion mode, in trying to be adaptable, in trying to be like, OK, I'm thinking about this situation in an adaptable, compassionate way. But it finished doing that before the end of March. And by, you know, March 20th is that's when Aries season hit. Well, we're starting to plant seeds. So if people could not plant seeds at the proper time then that's likely because of all that emotional slush that I was talking about. So then you got like, you know, what? Th uh, I, I personally, uh, knowing that there are th uh, critical degrees for the cardinal signs and different critical degrees for the fixed signs and mutable signs, uh, for the cardinal ones, it's, uh, which is Aries, that's cardinal means starting new things. Um, and, you know, Aries is arise, same letters, and it starts with A, first letter. Uh, so there's 0, 13, and 26 are the degrees that are critical for that. So And I could feel that. And that's why I, bef I timed my clock so that I could plant <laughs> some marijuana seeds at, uh, um, uh, before that 26 degree finished. 
And so, you know, that lets you sit pretty and stuff. But how are you going to sit pretty if you've only been, like, a lot of people have been only benefiting from that flashy aspect of the Aries energy of, like, look at me, look at me. Because for a while, that there was a lack of fire in the chart. So when that came, that was, like, welcome. If you forgot all about Earth energy during that time and we're just locked in compassion mode and, hey, we're all one and let's party with everybody and whatever, you know, that's probably catching up with you now. Um... But uh, on the positive side, you know, uh, you would have been, instead of having excessive compassion, you would have been allowing certain chapters to end, allowing certain uh, things to run their course and, and say bygones will be bygones and you move on and uh, you would have planted your seeds on time in Aries season and were various times, whatever, and then uh, in Taurus season now, which just started not yesterday, but... I think 10.25 p.m. Eastern the previous day, uh, you get to then kind of sit pretty and then watch out for misusing that gift of sitting pretty later, <laughs> right? Because nothing stays the same. Everything changes all the time. And uh, But the important thing here to note is that that there is uh in march we that mercury moved pretty quick and, and so that 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 our thoughts and emotions were on that emotional stuff so if people are still trying to for all of the last month trying to get you to like feel sorry for them or something like that then, <laughs> then forget about it it's like we already had our minds synced up with the, which is our minds is mercury synced up with the sun which was in aries and Aries rules by Mar ruled by Mars. So if you don't think there's any warlike aspect to the last, like, for, for, for Aries season, then you're just not paying attention because Aries, rules, Aries rules the head. And Aries is about birth. And when you're born, you come out head first. And a birth is, like I said, it's a struggle. It's not fun. From the child's perspective, from if you're actually a, a baby in a womb, you don't even know the difference between yourself and the rest of the world. And all of a sudden... You have this oceanic state for like nine months and you think it's all of eternity. All of a sudden your whole world comes crashing in on you and you have to fight. You have to use every ounce of your strength. You don't even know there's a you, but somehow you're doing it. And then you come out and you're like, whoa, what the hell is this? I got a hand. But you don't even say I got a hand because you don't know there's an eye. You're just aware of a happening and shit like that. Okay, These are the kinds of energies that, that people have to be aware that they've been dealing with the last month with Aries season. And uh, so, in other words, any kind of light, which is the sun, was shed on Mercury. Uh, the true aspect of what people were trying to say, we probably got the basic gist of it by now. And uh, if anything, now, on the, uh, what was it? Uh, let me just open up this. Merc Retro. Where is the Merc Retro? 2022 yeah so uh so around the 26th 26th ish is when uh the uh, mercury retrograde uh bullshit will start to start and then it'll really be bad for that uh i don't mean to be a fear monger but i mean It'll be exact. It'll be uh, ret the Mercury retrograde will technically start around the tenth of May. So, w right in the middle of that is 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 when the Sun, which is, as we said, practicality. We're sitting here uh, talking about the seeds we planted, letting them grow. Now we get to slow it down with the Taurus season. Stop and smell the roses. Uh, as we stop and smell the roses communication might be a little dicey not just because of that uh, uh, of the fact that we already thought enough about the direction of the seeds we want to plant the direction of our momentum and what we want to birth and who's in the way of that and stuff like that uh, but also because of uh, Mercury square Saturn that's coming up on the 24th and so yeah, I can go a couple of different directions with this now. Hold on a second. Um, but before I go in that direction, I think I wanted to say that 
uh, uh, right in the middle of Mercury retrograde, which everybody knows is a time when, you know, communication is garbage. You can't get anything across properly. People hear what they want to hear. And uh, you've got to, like, comb through things with a fine-tooth comb a lot more for contracts. Uh, and, and people will get missed calls. Uh, transportation will be difficult. Uh, that's happening, this Mercury retrograde. Anytime it seems to happen, I feel like uh, there's more Geminis that come onto my stream uh, on, on the other platform. That, and, like, uh, this time it's going to be during when the sun will have entered uh, Gemini. And uh, so once we've had the time to, to, to take things slow and, and appreciate the earth, appreciate that we did come out of the womb, and we did, uh, uh, and shit, that reminds me of the other thing I wanted to say. Okay, all right, well, I'll finish this first. So once we've had the time to appreciate that we got out of the womb, then we'll have something, you know, uh, we'll get to see how practical we can actually be. And then if we are actually practical, then we're going to be able to uh, uh, move on and not be subject to the, the excessive Gemini gossip and stuff like that. Gemini is really gossipy. So when it enters Gemini season, I mean, yeah, when it enters uh, yeah, Gemini season, that'll be right in the middle of Mercury retrograde. So, I don't know, some, usually the Mercury retrograde is like the, that station at the start, that 10th is really the brunt of it, and pe it's like the people who get it will get most of the bullshit, that, the false assumptions that they need to correct by like a week and a half into that Mercury retrograde, and then the rest is like other people just catching up kind of thing, uh, that's what it feels like anyway, but so, um... It might not be the end of the world that just as Gemini season gets wrapped up, it, it, it uh, will be uh, just finishing up the, the post-Mercury retrograde shadow phase. And by the way, I haven't looked into how often these two things get synced up or whatever, but this is just the thing that's happening. Now, the other thing that I wanted to say um, was, what was it? So I touched upon that Mercury square Saturn, right? That's on the 24th. That's communication about practical matters. We'll have friction with karma, long-term karma, order and structure. You can't get order and structure unless you get consensus from the group. But that consensus from the group is via, like, like that's because Saturn is an Aquarius. So Aquarius is fixed just like Taurus. So they're, like, you know, both stubborn about the thing. So our itch about getting a consensus and having being fair to everybody uh in terms of where we implement limitations or cutting someone off or or not completely or you know you know what i mean uh so okay i can't think straight without this caffeine like, hold on a second let me get this caffeine this is what i'm talking about the neptune energy okay and this and the scorpio south i'm a scorpio my south node is in Scorpio. The whole, everybody is right now having a south node Scorpio in the sky right now. We're all feeling south node Scorpio. Uh, so that is uh, addictions. <laughs> so again, that's why it's dicey with this Mercury stuff. Anything with Taurus now, since it's aligning with that north node, as I said earlier, we're extra challenged to put ourselves outside our comfort zone for the sake of practicality. And if we don't do that, we'll have to rely on uh, the, sh the psychological resources of that Scorpio. Uh, no need to get into that. I might have touched on that earlier, but like in another video or whatever. But the, the point is, um, that same day that Mercury is conjuncting that North Node, it's sextiling that Neptune. And wh what did we just say about Neptune and Pisces? The whole first like half of this thing, right? So we're going to have an opportunity to speak in a compassionate way but it's going to be harder to uh uh because of that mercury square saturn it'll be harder to do it in a traditional way a way that reflects like being reserved and stuff like that which is uh yin energy also so mercury in taurus uh, uh taurus is yin energy 
but what I wanted to say is is the uh, you know so that Mercury conjuncted with that uh, uh, Uranus April eighteenth. That's when I said the two keys on the piano. So that's like um, uh, when we were knowing on a mental level how how much we're itching to liberate ourselves on a practical level. Uh, now, hold on. Now, what, what did I want to say here? I was looking at the, the planetary uh, the ephemeris charts. I hope I didn't forget anything from that. Uh, basically, Let me just sip this. There's often stuff happening with that North Node and whatever. I, I don't follow it as much as I should, maybe, but I, I don't think uh, uh, it, it needs to be followed all the time, all the time. But it is something to keep in the back of your mind, especially since it is a long-term influence of over 18 months there. And, of course, uh, you know... <coughs> As I mentioned, uh, uh, Aries, uh, no, not Aries. Oh, what was I going to say? <coughs> Here, let me grab my blue kyanite and my amethyst. Blue kyanite for the throat chakra, amethyst for the third eye. And yeah, let's maybe put some more amethyst and some quartz all up in this bitch. All right, so, so that same day Mercury conjuncted Uranus, you had Sun square Pluto. The Sun is ego, and it rules Leo. And you all know how egotistical Leos can be, but it was in Aries, fire just like Leo. So there is that. Uh, all fire signs have problems with ego. So that was squaring Pluto, which is power and control issues, psychological issues, death and rebirth. You know, we're talking about death and rebirth here with that, with that, with that uh, Pisces going to Aries. We said that we said that about Pisces season going to Aries season. And what I'm here to tell you is that's going to happen on a, the same kind of exhaustingness, but on a different time frame for the other planets, right? So. Um, so yeah uh, and those planets being it, it's we just freshly entered uh, uh, Pisces for, for Mars energy uh, I could say a bunch of stuff about that but I, I won't uh, so but basically war and conflict is happening in a Pisces way which is you know they're hippies so like how are you going to have <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of a weird uh, thing you got to reconcile there, but basically it can also make you more passionate and less uh, hesitant to uh, perform your art publicly or something like that. But in ter terms of art, that's like mysticism. That's like the you know that's uh, that's what we're talking about here with this excessive passion energy and, or not this excessive dream kind of energy. And thin veil kind of energy, like like the, the veil between worlds, uh, is thinner when you're at death. That's that's that Pisces, is endings. So all this stuff about uh, endings, we're gonna experience it now on uh, in a warlike level or conflict or passion. There's gonna be certain things we're passionate about that we might need to let go of. Or uh, there's gonna be uh, certain. Uh, 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 things we let slide too much, maybe uh, now Mars will come oh, is gonna help come in or has been helping to come in and draw lines in the sand and put your foot down for that. 
but since it's mutable energy, you know, you could be prone to snapping if you adopt too much. That's mutable. So that's Venus being mutable, Mars being mutable, Jupiter mutable, Neptune mutable. And so, like I said, that same death rebirth energy is going to happen in the conflict zone, which is Mars, and in the relationship zone, which is Venus. Fortunately, Venus won't go retrograde the entire rest of the year. And Venus rules Taurus and Libra, and we're in Taurus season. And so you got also Venus being the numerology of 2022. So 2 plus 0 plus 2 plus 2 plus 0 plus 2 plus 2 is 6, which is tied to Venus. So you got that. You got like, that's like two or three things emphasizing Venus energy uh, for the year. And then we're, now we're in a planet that's about that. And Venus is in Pisces. And so we're, we're finding beauty and harmony in being adaptable and stuff. But how much is too much? How much any sob stories is too many? How much do you have to watch people not carry their own weight and stuff like that? Right now the moon's in Capricorn, which is about being off put by that kind of behavior. <laughs> but, and of course, uh, sun in Taurus, as we said, Mercury in Taurus, so a lot of Earth there. Um, but how much is too much adapting? And how much is too much thinking about people... Uh, you know other people's problems and, and not being able to focus on your own thing especially when you know you already went through that shit for two months basically collectively we all did that in terms of our actions now it's going to happen on a relationship level for love and money and our money too maybe our money we're going to have to be more adaptable are we, are we adapting too much with our money are we sacrificing too much it's hard to tell pisces is neptune which is illusions right now that that venus is in pisces in the 17th degree so we still got some time um, for that shit. Let's see, like, uh, so mutable signs uh, 4 and 17. Actually, that means right now-ish is the time, the last critical degree for the mutable signs, which includes Pisces. So if Venus is in Pisces in the 17th degree, and we know 17th degree is the last critical degree for Pisces, then boom, right now, relationships should be front and center for a lot of people. They should be what you're focused on and you're going to be focused on it in an emotional way you're going to be trying to be nice about it <laughs> you know <laughs> trying to um but you know if you don't want like i said before like some things you should just like move on and otherwise when that gemini season hits since it's going to be with the gemini uh, with the mercury retrograde gemini is ruled by mercury then uh, people are going to be gossiping too much or whatever. Like, or they'll simply like not be having the time to uh, uh, learn about what's happening in their world and current events or in their neighborhood and stuff like that. Like Gemini is about being sort of tested and, and having to know what's up. They speak everybody's language in a way. So they have no excuse for not knowing, for not being caught up on certain things. But if you're with emotional slush like this, then, uh, you know, if, if you're hitting this thing too much, <laughs> you know, that's, uh, again, that was confirmation for me when that shit happened, when I got this for free. That was uh, Jupiter conjunct uh, Neptune. But let me go back here a bit. A couple of the things. I know this video is going to cut me off, but when it is 52 minutes, we're at 38 minutes now. So I mentioned, uh, oh man, there's so much things to mention. Uh, let's see here. So April 12th, that Jupiter conjuncted Neptune. You had uh, Mercury square Pluto April 10th. So even before that April 12th, our minds were on how much uh, it was in Mercury. At, it, it was in Aries at the time that, that uh, Mercury... So that would have been thinking about power and control issues or thinking about uh, death and rebirth and stuff like that. Yeah, I could say more, but less is more with this shit sometimes. So, so that Mercury square Pluto that is when we started to think about how there was like imbalances and, and power and stuff like that. And then you have that blending of that good luck thing with the pipe on the, on the April 12th and then... Uh, sun sextile Saturn that same day, so some 
type of authority stuff might have been exercised or uh, uh, some of our actions might have been having an opportunity to be tamed that fiery action sun and fiery Aries could have been tamed by a, a more uh, traditional approach with that Saturn and Aquarius but what I wanted to say is here I, I know I know why this is foggy now I'm looking at the the the, the long, not the wrong data but just a different format of it is here so here we, I get to see the one degree orbs and stuff like that I'm looking at the exact when the aspects are exact but when I th thought about what I wanted to say it was this other window so so right now we're the 20th and 21st so let's say you say um, <clears throat> Right now we're on the 21st and let's say you're looking at a chart that tells you uh, when the aspects are most in your face let's call that one degree when they're most in your face these these things like the sun square pluto that's that tug of war kind of uh maybe more internal but like still tug of war between uh your ego and the long-term intergenerational psychological power and control fears taboos whatever kind of shit that's kind of where we're over the brunt of that now but it's gonna re uh, um, we're over the actually we're over the brunt of anything within a one degree orb now we get a little bit of reading room in that respect for April 20th 21st 22nd and 23rd and then the only thing that will be in the so-called in your face one degree orb is Mercury square Saturn so that means this stuff about Saturn, the, these things about uh, laying down the law and stuff like that, that people might have been trying to do around the time that uh, the excessive drinking and uh, partying, whatever, of, of April 12th. If that uh, Saturn energy didn't get implemented properly, and keeping in mind that uh, a square in general is Saturn energy, with, like for example, with that Sun square Pluto I just described, and this uh, Mercury square Saturn coming up. Uh, if that Saturn energy didn't get implemented well, it's probably because people were too much in impulsive Aries mode and just having fun. Aries likes to be seen. They might have been getting off on the attention they were getting or whatever. Uh, um, okay, I'm getting thrown off again because of this fucking time. It's all it's the technical difficulties with this phone that drives me nuts. Like it's, So, so that uh, this t this friction, this square, one of the only squares we're having recently, as I said, April 18th uh, and 19th, a lot of that Sun square Pluto, uh, a lot of ego versus intergenerational stuff and and uh, power and control issues, people being excessively egotistical, people, people being excessively intense or something like that. Um, <coughs> That was happening at a time when, uh, like I said before, the Mercury conjunct Uranus, Venus was all up in that shit, so Mercury was sextiling Venus, Venus was sextiling Uranus, so basically relationships, ideas, communication, liberation, all kind of intermingled. That, that, um, um, So with that kind of slush, right, we're talking about the, the, the square energy being more about delayed gratification. So if people had excessive good times, you know, that, that's, it's easy to, to not want to do the, the delayed gratification thing. Um... And I did say, I just said earlier, Mercury was squaring Pluto April 10th. 
so we started to think about the power and control issues April 10th some order came around April 12th 13th and then uh, uh, the power and control issues that we thought about earlier were now also happening with respect to actual actions during that thing where uh, thoughts and relationships and money and liberation uh, and rebellion were all intermingled so you can see already how that kind of shit doesn't benefit from people being uh, uh, confused or people watching Netflix too much or people drinking too much or people having too much compassion or people uh, uh, not listening to their bodies when they when they feel burnt out and so I mean uh, their feet might have been hurting in Pisces season their head might have been hurting in, in, in Aries season and now in, in Taurus season I know Taurus rules the throat I don't know if there's other stuff that it rules probably does but I know the throat for sure and they're about the second house which is, which is values so voicing your values so A lot of people need to just like, like move the fuck on and, 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 and understand their values and understand that if they know their values, that's going to benefit them in that 18th month cycle with that Taurus North Node, first of all. And uh, th that... Uh, I can I, I just cannot think when there's a countdown. Like seriously, like that's it's at forty six minutes here, and I know it's going to cut me off in eight minutes. And just that alone, I know I'm not going to be able to squeeze in what I want to say. But let me see if I got the gist. The gist is too much hippie like energy recently. People exhausted. People not able to recognize that they're exhausted. Now the tourist season will force you to recognize if you're exhausted. You're going to see no point. And continuing to plant seeds where you tried to plant seeds and it didn't work especially if you're still hung up on uh that ending stuff about pisces uh being in mars uh, 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 having a, a f finalizing a way in which you view conflict and warlike energy and also uh that okay, yeah well, like I said before, like uh, it, it, it's it's a lot of planets in Pisces, and it's gonna we're gonna have that. I haven't fast forwarded the, the chart to see like when which one will drop off and whatever. But at this time, it's it's obvious that it's it's been an annoying overload of Pisces energy for the last while. And again, Pisces is spiritual. It doesn't have to be bad. It's just you have to recognize the weight of, of closing a chapter. A lot of people, maybe they showed that with their actions because the sun just moved through that ending uh, Pisces, beginning Aries thing, and now we're in Taurus. But they're still having to deal with those endings on a, 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 a money level, which is Venus rules money. And uh, relationship level and whatever kind of excessive relationship stuff they have in there since I mean just for example Jupiter is in Pisces we're getting our hope and optimism from compassion so if you're like I said compassionate too much to too many people like you're not gonna be able to tell the difference between your emotions and other people's emotions you have no boundaries and uh, you're gonna be having hope based on illusions if that wasn't already a risk just from Jupiter in Pisces by itself you have all this other hope, like people just getting high on hope, like the last, like, wow, like it's, thank God we, uh, we have, thank uh, Source, or whatever it is that we have uh, th this welcome Earth energy here with the Sun in Taurus, Moon in, in Capricorn for now, and Mercury in uh, Taurus. And so now, as I said earlier, at this particular time, the challenge is being too much yin, too much behind the scenes, too much illusions, too much uh, confusion. If you're not doing the illusions, maybe someone is trying to confuse you or whatever. Uh, uh, too much materialistic, that's the negative part of the overload of the, the earth energy. But uh, there seems to be like a duality thing here because the moon's in Capricorn and the only other sign in Capricorn is 
Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. My bad. So scratch that duality thing, but, but, uh, because I just noticed also Uranus is in Taurus. But at least for the short-term planets, we have a double whammy. We have that uh, Sun in Taurus and Mercury in Taurus. And if if you ignore that Uranus in Taurus, which is... Uh, okay, I don't know, I'm getting ahead of myself here. I'm just... I'm having brain farts again because of this timer thing. Look, I'm done. This is the, what I had to say about the last few bit of energies and going forward, uh, let me just see if it, there, I might make another video, I don't know, we'll see. Um, in terms of the Mars stuff, on April 24th we also have, we're in the three degree orb of Sun Sextile Mars, which means we're going to be able to take action on conflicts. Uh, a little more and uh, it will be pr more practical action the sun is action Mars is action uh, Mars can be in uh, as we said uh, 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 Pisces and where is my window here where is this uh, yeah so the sun will be in Taurus Mars will be in Pisces so Pisces and Taurus kind of mix well together, so that's what's up. Uh, yeah, there's no time left to, to, to expand on this. So basically, that's it for now. The video is going to cut me off. Potentnews.com is my website. Hit me up if you want to buy a tarot reading or astrology reading. And thank you for watching this, and that's it.